Hi everyone, my name is Lydia and welcome. Today we're gonna to be painting Acorn Duo. This painting is a great reminder that we don't have to go far to find inspiration. So I live in the Northern Hemisphere and right now we are still in summer, but we are about to move in the direction of fall or autumn. One of the reminders for me that we're moving into that fall direction are the acorns start to fall from the oak trees in our area. And when they first start to fall, they are not dried out yet, so they're still green. So I picked up a few of the acorns off my property to use as inspiration. Had a couple of them, and they're still green, and they were on the ground. And I also picked up a dry oak leaf so that I can also use that as inspiration for the painting. So maybe wherever you are, you can just step outside, look around at nature, and find inspiration for yourself. Nature is a wonderful way to get inspired, to find your muse, and you don't have to normally look too far to find nature. Even if you're in a big city, most of the time you can find something that's living amongst the humans. So I hope you enjoy this painting today. So grab your paints and your brushes and I'll meet you back at the easel. I'm using to do the painting today are an 8 by 8 inch stretched and primed canvas. I'm going to be using acrylic paints and the colors I'm using are quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, dioxine purple, and titanium white. The brushes I'll be using are going to be a half inch flat brush, a small round brush, this is about a number four and an even smaller round brush and this is a number one. You're going to want to have a jar of water nearby to rinse your brushes. You're also going to want to have a paper towel or an old cloth for drying your brushes and also a mister bottle for keeping everything nice and damp as you work. Remember you can always switch up your materials but now that you know what you need we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with my half inch angle brush and I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to have some water on the brush, but not too much. So I'm going to dip the bristles in and get any of that excess water off. And I'm going to have a nice light blue background for my painting. So I'm going to take quite a bit of the white. and I want to get a touch of my blue. So I've got just a little hint of the blue. So a little touch of the phthalo blue is right there on the tip. I'm just gonna mix that in and we're gonna see what that looks like because I don't want this to be too, too dark. So I'll add a little bit more white to that. And we're starting to move into fall, so with that, there's going to be a little bit of warmth, so I'm going to go ahead over here and just pick up a very small, just a little pinprick even of this burnt sienna. So just a little bit of the burnt sienna, just to give it a little bit more earthiness. I don't want too much because it'll turn it just a little too much on the greenish side. And I'm going to start at the very top of my canvas and just make little strokes. Just X's crisscross. You can really get this on any way that you like. I'm just trying to get this color on the canvas. And it can all be the same color. You can work from dark at the top down to light at the bottom if you like. But we're going to have ourselves close up on our acorns. So it doesn't need to be, but it certainly can be if you want. Come back in, pick up some more paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and work to get some of this paint laid down on my edges. And 
And I'm just going back and getting a little bit of water and a little bit of the paint as I go. And I'm just wiping my brush down flat onto the canvas. And then when I want to blend it, I'm just staying right on the very tip of the brush, a nice light pressure just to blend the paint in. And you can certainly use a bigger brush if you want, a one inch flat brush to cover more quickly if you like. But I'm just going, go ahead and just get this on. Got a little water on the brush. I'm just gonna blend all the paint a little more up here. And then move it on down. Once you get the canvas covered the way that you like it, we're gonna go ahead and let it dry. I'm gonna rinse off my half inch angle brush and don't forget to go ahead and get your sides. But we're going to come back and still use this brush. So we need to let this dry first. Okay, so I've gone ahead, the canvas is dry, and I put in my sketch. This is gonna be my leaf, and there's two acorns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up a green color, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that green color on both the acorn and the leaf. And then we'll start to add other colors to distinguish between the two of them. So I'm going to take my half inch angle brush, and I'm getting it wet, and I'm gonna pick up some of my phthalo green some of the white. A little phthalo blue. I want this to be a little bit more green. I'm gonna get a hint of my burnt sienna and just start mixing that in. A little bit more of the green. So this is gonna be fairly dark. Let's see what that looks like. You can always add white to your color mix to see where you are with it. I'm liking that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this mixed in. And I'm just gonna start filling in my leaf shape. And the thing to remember is that with your angle brush, you're able to get into your corners, the round areas a little bit more easily. So you can you work with the the tip of your brush facing up and put it into the corner or the round sections of your leaf and then you're able to get into them very quickly and easily. This little piece of the leaf may even go off the canvas a little bit. And just continue to work just to fill this in. And you don't have to worry about your strokes. We just want to make sure we just get the shape of our leaf blocked in. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and get the acorns covered with this same color just to fill in the shape of them.
And once you get this all filled in, we're gonna let those dry, those two pieces dry, and then we'll come back and we'll start getting in some detail on both of those and we'll get the caps of the acorns done and the little stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my half inch angle brush because when we come back, we're gonna be using our small round brush. So now while we're continuing to wait for everything to dry with the leaf and the acorns, we're gonna go ahead and start filling in some of these other areas of the acorn. I'm going to take some of my, I'm using my, my small round brush, so the medium one, the medium brush that we're using, and I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna and a little bit of the titanium white. And I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm only just a stippling motion, so just little dots at the very top of the acorns, and you don't have to fill in the whole space. Just trying to get some dots in there. We'll do the same thing to the other acorn. And then we're gonna get the little pieces on the bottom of the acorn. Just gonna fill those in. And then I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna come back into that same color. And I'm trying to get my brush to come to a nice point. And I'm going to put my pinky finger on the canvas as a guide so that I can work straight down. And don't worry if you cross right over your leaf because we got to get the highlights on the leaf. And fill in that little area of the stem. And there's a little part that attaches the acorn to the stem. And I'm going to add just a little bit of my purple to this burnt sienna color. And I'm going to put that little attachment a little darker for now so we know where it is on each of the acorns. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead now. I'm gonna rinse out what's on my little brush, the little round brush. And I'm gonna make sure there's no pigment in my brush and I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna get some of my phthalo blue and I'm gonna bring it up into, bring it right up into this green color we've been using. And then a little bit of the cadmium yellow. And you can see how that turns in a nice greenish color. It's a little brighter than the color we were using to begin with because the yellow brightens it up a little more. I'm going to add just a little bit more of my titanium white. And I'm going to, so I'm going to paint this as though the bottom of this top acorn is more in shadow and the side of the bottom acorn is more in shadow. So I'm going to come up with this color and I'm just gonna start, first of all, just brushing it in there and follow along the contour. And then I'm gonna start making downward strokes. So this is the dark side of my acorn. Get a little more water, come back in, get a little more paint, and I'm gonna do that for the dark side of this acorn, the very top acorn. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to pull a little bit more white. I didn't rinse out my brush. I just use whatever color is there. I can add a little bit of that color in if I need to. A little bit more yellow. So it makes it a little more green. And then I'm going to come to the center and just start sweeping that green color in. I'm just making downward strokes, sweeping that in. And then I'm gonna to go to where each of these colors meet and I'm just gonna make little circular motions. And if you have too much paint on your brush, it may not work as well, but you want to get some of that. You can always come back in, grab your, your paper towel or your 
old cloth and wipe some of that paint off. We do want to make some circular motions to get this to blend right where they meet. And you can also add a little more water if you find it's not blending. Just add yourself a little more water and just keep that going. And I like to take my finger and just kind of run it down as well. So then I'm going to take that same color. So I'm going to go up above it. I'm going to grab some of my cadmium yellow, mix it into that color. So now it's a little bit more cadmium yellow than it is the green color. And we're going to go up to the very top of each acorn. So this one is going to have its bright color here. Sweep that in. And I'm following the contour of the shape of the acorn. And I'm going to do the same thing here to get some of that paint off the brush. And I'm going to rinse my brush off, get some of that paint off, wipe it. Make sure you don't have too much pigment. And we're going to come in and just make little circular motions here. And that's going to help it blend a little more. Wipe off your brush, get a little more water, and then come down and do the same thing with this one. And if you go outside of your acorn, make sure you don't have any color on your brush like I did here. You can try to get that off a little bit just by getting some water on your brush. And I'm going to even take my little angled brush here and come back along the edge and just wipe that off. All right. Now what I want to decide is, so the leaves of the, the oak tree, so the oak leaves tend to have a nice vein coming down the middle. So we want to begin to decide where we want to put our vein. And so I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my small round brush, and I'm going to go back to my angle brush and make sure there's no pigment on my angle brush. And I'm going to mix up more of a light peach color. So I'm going to take the yellow, some titanium white, a little more titanium white. There we go. And I want to do a drop, just a little tiny bit of my red. And that may even be too much. So I'm going to offload some of that. Let's see how that goes. We can do just a little more. I just want to add this red a little bit at a time because it will quickly, quickly take over. There we go. And I'm going to add just a drop of burnt sienna to give it a little bit more of that earthy color. And again, it's going to be a really small amount, so I'm, not, I'm going to offload some of it because I don't want to. And what I mean by offload is I'm just wiping some of it off on my palette, putting it up there and going a little at a time. There we go. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush. So I'm going to wipe some of that paint off. And I'm going to get my brush wet. I want to make sure I have the pigment out of it. All right. So my brush is wet. I'm going to come back up into this color that I just mixed. And I really want it to be, <clears throat> so I really want it to be on the very longest tip, that very point of the brush. And that is going to be the part that's touching the canvas. So I'm going to start my line I'll make a little dot, so I'm going to make a little dot so you can see. 
right there. And then I'll make a little dot down here. And I'll keep it on the canvas so we can see. And then I'm gonna draw a line that kind of curves a little bit and comes to meet this little dot. So if you can't keep a steady hand, it's good to have your pinky on the canvas, but you want just the very tip of your brush to be touching. dragging it along and keep your eye on the prize down here. All right, there we go. All right, so once you have that done, you can go back with your smaller brush and, and make it a little bit more noticeable, but we're gonna actually be putting highlights on it, so I'm not worried about that. But you can decide where you wanna put your veins. So when you're thinking about your leaf, the oak leaf has veins that come from the tips that go up to this little center line that we drew. So each little leaf piece that's jutting out has a vein that goes to it. So you can decide where you want them, and then you can go ahead and put them in. And I'm gonna... So I went ahead and just put in a little road map of some of my veins and I'm going to go back in with my small round brush and I'm going to make sure my mixture, my, my peach looking color is really kind of wet so I added a drop of water and I'm going to kind of wipe off some of that paint off of my brush and I'm just going to come in and just start filling those in. It's sometimes it's nice to have a road map of where you want to go. And of course, we're not done with the leaves, so we can always go back in. I'm going to go back over that and go back in and color over what we don't like with paint if we don't like it. You can always change it. We're going to be adding more greens to the leaf anyway, so we don't stress about it. Just have fun with it. Put a little bit more paint on my brush. All right, and I'm gonna make this side of my stem a little lighter, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my small brush, and I'm just drawing a nice straight line down the stem area here. And I'm gonna take the same peachy color, and I'm gonna go ahead and stipple some of that color in around where I did the burnt sienna earlier. I want to cover it all up, maybe fill in those little spots that you left blank. I think I'm going to add just one more here as well. Okay. I'm going to make these a little bit more refined. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that peach color out of my brush and I'm going to start adding a little bit of that medium green color to my leaf. So I'm going to come back to my palette and I've got the color that that peach color out of my small round brush. Get a little more water just to be that medium color and I'm just going to start doing little stripes on my leaves. I'm not covering up everything. And this is where if you felt like you got crazy with your little vein lines, you can always go back and thin out your vein lines by putting a little bit of this color next to it. Get a little bit more. We're just not trying to cover up everything that we did. We're just trying to add a little bit of some texture. So just little swipes on the leaf. Get a little bit more water. If you feel like you're not offloading the paint in a nice smooth way, just get a little more water on your brush and just keep on going.
All right, and then I'm gonna go back up into this brighter color. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to it. And I want to hit some of the brighter colors, mostly on this area that's up closer to the sky where there may be some more sun. I'm gonna keep this bottom area more in shadow. I may have a few hit down here, but not many, not too many. Bright, bright down there as you're gonna go a little brighter at the top. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna rinse my brush, I'm gonna add even more yellow to this green color. And a little titanium white. And I'm gonna come along and just refine some of these top edges of my leaf. And we're just gonna hit it here and there. Maybe there's a little bit of light coming in. I may even want to have some of that hit on the top a little bit more. Maybe a little tiny bit on the bottom, but not too much on the bottom one. And then I'm gonna take some of that same color, maybe even pick up a little bit more of that cadmium yellow, mix it in with that green, a little titanium white. And I'm just gonna to start to hit just where I think there may be a little bit more brightness on my acorn. All right, and then I'm not gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna take some white, quite a bit of that white. So I got quite a bit of titanium white and then just mix it in with what was on my brush. And then I'm gonna take some of that paint off because I want just this white and greenish color. And I'm gonna come along and do a little bit more of the hits. I'm gonna do that same thing here. And I'm also gonna put a little curve there and a little curve of that here. Get a little bit more of that on my brush. There we go. And it so tells me that this acorn's round and is picking up some of that light in certain spots. And then I'm gonna go back to my leaf and maybe hit that, layering some of that on here as well. I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm just gonna pick up some more of that white and I'm gonna go along and just hit some of these veins with that white. And then I'm gonna take some of that, it's a titanium white with a little, there's a little bit of the green on my brush and that's fine. I'm just coming along and I'm gonna just hit along the edge of my stem and I'm gonna take that. So wherever I think there may be more light hitting on the top of my acorn, I'm just gonna hit some of that there as well. Not too much, just a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down to my darkest green, add some blue and a hint of diox purple. So it gets really dark. Maybe even add just a little tiny bit of this red there we go. And I'm gonna come around to the shadow side of my acorn and put some of that on the shadow side. And then I can rub that in to blend and I'm gonna come down in here and do some of that on my leaf as well, down at the very bottom parts of the leaf. And that just gives it some dimension And for these little knobs on the bottom of the acorn, I'm 
also going to hit one side with this, so just a little dot on the darker side, dot on the darker side. All right, we're gonna let that dry. We have a few more things we're gonna do with the shadows and we're gonna use our really small, small brush to do that, so my number one, I'll be switching to that next. Okay, so I'm taking one little last look at my painting and I wanna decide what little tiny details I can do to make it stand out a little more. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my really small brush and I'm gonna dip, I put some fresh white out. And I'm gonna go dip into that white and I've rolled my brush into it and I'm gonna come back in and this will help me get a few more of those little tiny highlights on the veins that are even thinner than I could get with my other brush. You may have to keep reloading. So you'll keep reloading, rolling your brush in the paint and coming on around. And I can dip straight into my titanium white and I can get a little bit better on getting some highlights in here. Make them nice and thick. And maybe a few more here. And then I'm gonna draw a nice little partial line on each bright side underneath where the shell cap of the um, acorn meets. So right where they meet together on the bright side. And I'm gonna do another little little curve there, and then tap it in, and a little curve there, tap it in. On the bright side, I'm gonna hit a little dot of white for these little nubs on the bottom. Can tap that in. And then I'm gonna go along the very tops of my leaves on the top side, and maybe even put a little hit of white on those just to bring out some of the, the brightest of brights. So wherever you think you may like those. And I'm gonna also do where the little pieces of the acorn meet, the little stems. So this side is a little brighter and this top side's a little brighter. And then I'm gonna take my Diox Purple and I can use some of the white that's on my brush to mix into it and just a hint of the burnt sienna. I want it to be more purple. There we go, I'm gonna roll my brush in that. And then I'm gonna come on the dark side of the acorn. So for this acorn, it's this side. So where the acorn, sh the acorn cap meets the acorn itself. I'm gonna make a little curve under there so it looks like it's turning. And I'll keep it a little smooth. And then same thing, a little curve on the very bottom here. And I can come back in and just hit some of these bottom areas with that purple color just to give this a little bit more of some fun dimension. A little bit more water. I may even for that add just a hint of the green. Let's make it looks like it belongs to the leaf. Just want to have a little bit more shadow going around the leaf. And you don't make an outline, you're just kind of hitting it here or there, maybe in the leaf a little bit. That helps kind of shape it up. Back and put a little purple on each little side here. It's always good to take a moment to step back and see what it is that you may want to do a little bit more with. And I feel like there needs to be a little bit more darkness on my shells on each side here. So I'm going to take some of that burnt sienna with a little bit of purple in it. And I'm just going to dot a little bit with my small brush in there, just a little, put a little bit more white to that. Just 
just a little bit there and a little bit here. All right, so I'm taking a step back and one thing that I do want to do is add just a little bit of some of those peach colors sporadically through my leaf because although it's not quite fall yet, we're moving into fall. So these normally fall where I am in the early part of when we're moving toward the autumn equinox, but it's not quite autumn yet. So I'm gonna go back to my my small round brush and I'm gonna come back up into some of this peach color. And I'm just going to hit some of it more toward the middle of each part of my leaf. And I'm just going to take my finger and just run it across there. So it's just a little bit to let me know that, oh, there's, there's a little bit of some of the leaves starting to change just a little, not too much. And I'm trying to follow the, I'm gonna make a little circular motion there, following the shape of the leaf. I don't want to go too far down in my dark areas down there. I want those to stay dark. And that's just a little bit more close into the center part here. And if there's any other changes that you want to make, anything that you see that um, you see that you'd rather have a different way, that's perfectly great. You really want to make it your painting. So remember, your painting is not going to look like mine. And if I paint this two days from now, it's not gonna look the same. And that's a good thing because you wanna feel as though each painting that you do, you're learning, you're going the next step. So you're getting better. All right, I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna go ahead while we're standing here and I'm gonna sign it and I'm gonna go down below on the right hand side all right and if there's any other changes you'd like to make to your painting go ahead and do it make it your own thank you for keeping me company today and i hope you created something really nice for yourself don't forget to take a walk out in nature and get inspired until next time bye bye